Hey, it's Mateo of Two Brain Marketing. On this edition of the Two Brain Marketing Podcast, I'm talking with Darren from CrossFit Defy. You'll learn about his experience transitioning from a regional level CrossFit athlete to an owner of a brand new CrossFit box. You'll also learn about his experience in the founder phase, and you'll hear about how in the last four months, he spent $2,500 on ads and made $17,000 in front-end sales. So you don't want to miss this. Make sure to subscribe to Two Brain Radio for more marketing tips and secrets each week. Hello and welcome to the Two Brain Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Mateo Lopez. I'm one of the digital marketing mentors at Two Brain Business. Thank you for tuning in. This is your weekly dose of digital marketing magic. And in today's episode, we have a special guest, Darren Thornton, owner of CrossFit Defy. And you'll learn about his experience and how over the last four months, he spent $2,500 on ads and he has made $17,000 in front-end sales. So we want to learn all about that right now. So, Darren, how are you? I'm good, thanks. So, for those listening, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from, and a little bit about your business. My gym is in Canada, but I'm originally from England. I was in the British Royal Marines Commandos for about six years. I left there to pursue the kind of athlete lifestyle that CrossFit uh, was giving, you know, the old regionals trip, the, the competitions around the world, that kind of thing. And then sort of end of last year was sort of 2018 was my best year, but it still really wasn't accomplishing much long term. So it led me to go on to my next passion, which was, you know, to open my own gym. Wow. So did you find CrossFit during your time in the, in the Royal Marines? Yeah, just towards the end. It wasn't, it's not as big in, it wasn't as big back then as it was in the, in the States and the, and the, the U S military. Uh, but we were kind of doing it on our own and I, I, w- I really wanted to compete and get good at it. So I actually left. The, the Marines to follow competing because I would find that I would get into a bit of a rhythm. Then we'd go on a deployment or a training exercise and, you know, you wouldn't get into the gym for a month or two. So, you know, I really wanted to kind of pursue that passion for, for while I was young still. Wow. So you, you, you've been to regionals and kind of did the, the competition circuit for a, a little bit then? Yeah. So I ended up regionals in a team. I didn't quite make my individual goal of getting there as individual. I was very close in 2018, like top 250 in the world in the open, but not wow. for my region, unfortunately. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's still amazing. It's an amazing feat for sure. Okay. So then, so you've been in the scene then for a while and then, you know, what, what, what made you want to take the, the switch? And- yeah. I, I, my first job, actually, uh, I was doing some coaching at my local gym back home. And then I moved out to the Middle East when I left the military. I lived in Kuwait for just about almost two years uh, before moving to Canada. And I was- As a a civilian? Like not in the military? That that was in the military. I just went over there as a civilian, yeah. Uh, Kuwait, uh, you know, a different lifestyle for sure, but it gave that, that opportunity in the Middle East is very focused towards training. I, I coached. I trained, I went home, I slept. It's a, gotcha. it's a good routine to get into there, right? Gotcha. And um, there's no kind of distractions, if you will. So that worked well for me. Then, you know, I moved up, I moved to Canada. I kind of been, a, you know, I've been involved in like four or five different gyms and I've kind of seen what people do right. I've also seen what is not necessarily done right. And I just felt like I could, you know, hopefully do all the right things and give my members and build something up, you know, for me and my, and my family that could, you know, basically sustain us, right? My wife is also a medical doctor. So for her, she kind of sees sick people on a regular basis and she's very into CrossFit too. So it kind of went hand in hand that we could, you know, do something that is for the people who want to help themselves as well, right? Awesome. All right. So then you, you traveled, you were competing, you opened this business. So how long has your gym been open? Uh, 10 months. Oh, so you're brand new still. Yeah, September we opened baby, last year. Oh, baby business. Wow, it's, it's brand new. Brand new. Wow, okay, so then uh, what motivated you to, to join Two Rain? Did you, did you sign up with Two Rain before you opened the doors or right after? Or? No, unfortunately I didn't. I kind of knew I needed some help just on, you know, running a business properly. But I didn't really know much about Two Brain back then. About a few months into opening the gym, I realized that, you know, I needed a bit of direction. So I, used, I, I had some small with some other mentoring company. It didn't quite fit me, didn't quite work for what I was looking for. And then I came across, I, I actually came across a, a blog of you, you guys, the marketing side of the two brain. And I can't remember which one it was exactly now. And then I kind of delve in, found out about Chris Cooper and 
had a look at one of his books and I was like, okay, this, this is everything that I believe the gym should be run like, but I just didn't really have the, I don't know, the confidence in implementing it all sort of and how to do it. I'm curious to hear a little bit more about how you kind of mentioned this being a part of all these different gyms, especially in training and the circuit, you know, you're, you are probably exposed to a lot of different high caliber athletes and different training approaches to training and methodologies. How did all that inform what you wanted to create? Well, that like, I, I'm not interested in creating a gym of competitors. Anybody that, you know, is in this business realizes that that's such a small niche of people. They're also the toughest pr- kind of people to deal with too. And the ones who don't necessarily need, uh, they're not, you don't get the same amount of, you know, satisfaction of, of sort of changing their lives, if you will. Right. So I find a lot of gyms or gym, some gyms that I've been a part of really kind of hack that competitive scene up. And like, don't get me wrong. I'm super in for all for competition and, you know, my classes, you know, we, we work super hard, but it's, but it's not about, that's not the end goal of like, you know, achieving something like regionals or obviously that's not around, but you know, the central events or anything like that. So yeah, it was just kind of creating one of those gyms that has that as a, as a mindset, but it's not the only thing that, that matters, right? It's about seeing people, you know, do their first ever box jump because, and they've been freaking out about it for the last two months, right? That kind of thing kind of hypes me a little bit more than, uh, you know, seeing somebody who's a, who's a great athlete who snatches 275 pounds, right? Yeah, no, that makes it. Yes. And it is tough that you can make a successful gym pumping out competitive athletes, but it, it's, a, it's a tough, it's a different, it's a different approach, right? Then it's, it's a different like approach and you need to be in, you know, you need to, you need to be in the right areas for that. I think the right niche as well, right? Just get, there's only a few of them places I think around the world. Kind for of sure. Definitely. Okay. So what was life like, you know, it, it, it wasn't too long ago, right? You opened the doors in that founder phase. So what was life like doing it on your own? And then what kind of differences did you see once you started going through the mentorship process? The incubator was amazing. It, it just laid out the whole steps of like, you know, how do you set this up? And I had a lot of these things prior setup, I'd started writing systems, I'd started doing this, but it, it was a little bit disjointed. The biggest thing for me was having the, the marketing section of the incubator because we had a tough winter here in Canada, really, and really didn't see sort of January, February, March, many members at all joining. So I had a few people who'd followed me from a previous gym and we were pretty low on our membership. Doing okay, uh, we, did, we, do, we have a model that we do quite a bit of private coaching, which helps. It was, it was difficult to see where the next person was coming from. I tried some online advertising myself on Facebook and, and, and that kind of stuff. And it, I don't know if it didn't work because it was the wrong setup or it didn't work because we were so young and nobody really trusted us. I actually believe that that was a big part of it too. Um, a, a new gym, you know, saying that you can click this, you don't really know much about us, you know, you can only get so much off a website. Just now having a, you know, a, a steady stream of, of people coming on board who we can have a chat to, you know, discuss what we're all about. We have a pretty extensive blog that me and my wife kind of write once a week. And I feel like just having that on the back end, people now come in and they know a little bit about us, right? Our blog's pretty personal about what we are, who we are and what we believe in. And I feel like that coupled with, you know, the right approach of doing the Facebook marketing, how it should be done has really sort of helped us you know, to see a nice steady growth over, well, quite a rapid growth over the last sort of four months. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and I think that's great that you are creating that content. And then, I mean, yeah, you, you have insight that not a lot of people have with the methodology, you know, and so mm-hmm. I, I think creating that content is probably very valuable uh, for people who do want to try CrossFit and do, who do want to try this and see if it's going to work for them to, to reach their health and fitness goals. So that's, that's great. All right. So it sounds like it was better laid out in terms of how you should approach creating these systems, the staff manual, and some of the processes. It sounds like the incubator helped you narrow the focus and, and, and have a step-by-step plan on how to do some of those things. It sounds like uh, online ads gave you also more structure on how to set this thing up properly in conjunction with all the other you know, marketing that you're doing. And that, that's what blogging is. You are creating content, marketing, putting putting your message out there. So that's awesome. In your words, then what is it? I want to hear more about this, the model that you have, and we'll talk about Uh that right now, I think in a second, but what is it that you sell and and how do you sell it? We sell a way for people to get better at life. 
And that's kind of where we come from. And depending on where, what your goals are, what your um, lifestyle's like, if it's, if you're 55 years old and you're worried that you won't, you can't keep up to your kids no more or your potential grandchildren that are on the way, or if you're, you know, somebody who does want to take CrossFit to a little bit of a, a level of, you know, local competitions, that kind of thing, and everywhere in between. We have a lot of our members like to play pickup hockey leagues and baseball and that kind of thing. So, you know, having at least three or four workouts with us a week is going to help them get better at that. And, and that's kind of what we, that's the angle that we come from. In terms of selling it, we just want to meet people where they're at, guide them to the, through the right process, whether that's always going to start with some one-on-one training. And then depending on, like I said, where they're at is going to be how much of that we do. And then what kind of combination of, you know, hybrid membership we give them or if they're just looking for kind of group class and they love that experience we love the kind of skill sessions and just adding to that to people because you know everybody who's done them can't rave about them enough because it's like just having that one-on-one even for 30 minutes is really going to help them progress in everything else that they do Um, i think most people come to us with a goal of getting healthier fitter stronger losing weight is obviously primarily the main focus for most people but then once they get into it they want to they want to learn how to do all these crossfit groups and that then becomes more of a focal point which is really good for us where you can focus more on what can you do with your body rather than what does your body look like or you know or weight so what is your how do you structure your service offering then you mentioned a personal training kind of bias almost so how do you how do you set it up so we do we have some hybrid memberships so we have a, a once a month one-on-one training plus group classes we have a two times a month or a four times a month and that obviously would be, be weekly weekly one-to-ones and then uh, group training they're kind of like our our main hybrid and then we have you know some other offerings of just classes only or just personal training or only and it kind of depends on you know what the member wants we have a lot of members who are just like to go personal training route only and then we have a lot of members who are just group classes only so it's kind of we're kind of we cater a lot around sort of what the member wants in that terms but you know for us the more one-on-one contact we can get with a member the better we can help them you know the more the more we can help them and more, more we get to know them you know i i i do believe that we are as much of a relationship business as we are a, a fitness business, right? And if we don't build that relationship with somebody, there's no way that I can help them in the long run. You know, I want to know if they've got problems at work, at home, family, children, because, you know, we, we might be able to offer a different service that still gets them moving towards the goals. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. What is your front end offer for new people? Do they come in with the hybrid or what's the... Yeah, how do new um, people come in? So we're 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 working with the with the six week challenge kind of um, offer at the front uh, for our advertising. As soon as somebody comes in, I I tell them that the six week challenge is is purely a way of onboarding you into the gym and and getting to see if you like and understand. Sorry, you like and, and enjoy what we offer at the gym. It's going to start off with you know a number of one on one sessions. And then it could go into group only for a four week period, or it could go for a mixture of group and, and uh, one-on-one. It's, it's, it's all dependent on where the person's at. Well, let's talk about that a little bit more. Cause you know, it's, it sounds like you've got a pretty good ROI on your online funnels and advertisements. So what is the process? A lead comes in, uh, they inquire about this six week offer. What happens? Well, I think, the, the thing I want to definitely make note of is that our process is not perfect. Um, we have a lot of holes because at the moment I'm mainly running, doing everything up until about a week ago, I was doing, you know, maybe 27 classes a week and then 20 to 30 one-on-ones a week as well. So my time was pretty limited. Uh, recently just hired a, you know, I, I've had a coach for a couple of months. I've really, I've recently hired another guy, but this is, is off a, a less than perfect system. But basically when people come through, I'm going to get a notification straight away. I try and give them a call straight away. And then from there, I'm going to book them in for the no sweat intro. And then basically just go through their, what they're looking for and, you know, prescribe them what I find, what I feel like is the best option for them. Recently, I've kind of not brought our sort of offer sales binder out. And I kind of really just go with, I'm going to prescribe this to you. And I, I feel like this is the best way. I don't have packages that I'm now offering as much. It's more, hey, we should do four sessions, three sessions, two sessions, see how we go from there. Then we add another session if we need it. And it's, it's very much, you know, very individual for everybody. It's not perfect because I could definitely follow up a lot more on the leads that I don't call and, and speak with the first or, first or second time. But there's just, there's just a time restraint where, you know, I need to kind of prioritize certain things. And 
as long as, you know, I'm getting a steady stream. And it's like anything I find if I sit down for a couple of hours, then my ROI is going to be, you know, a hundred times better than if I'm only, you know, doing it once a bit. So the more you hustle with it, 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 you know, you definitely get the, the results. Yeah. And I'm, and obviously your gym's still new. You're still in that founder farmer phase. So yeah, time is definitely going to be the limiting factor, which I totally understand. But yeah, I, th- I think what you said, you're not being as strict with the packages that you're offering and say, Hey, you know what, let's just start with these two sessions. You know, I think for it's, it's, let's just get a sale. Right. I think that's, that's, it's not such a, it's not always a bad thing to just sell them on one or two personal training sessions. It's going to, if that's, you know, you know, what you think is the best fit for them for, for where they're at, for where they're at in terms of just physically, but also like in their headspace, right. You know, they, they may not be able to, to buy a $400 package right then, but you can sell them on one or two, see how it goes. It's easier to make that sale on the second time, right? Especially sure. once you've given them a little bit of, t- of a, of a taste, they've got, you've had a little more time to build that relationship. So yeah, someone, uh, someone's with it, just sell them on, sell them something. You know? And that's, you know, that's still a win and gives you more time to develop the relationship and upsell them for later on. Well, for me, if, 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 you know, if somebody's walked in the door, then something's not right in their life, right? It, it, whether it's a really big thing, big emotional thing, or it's just the fact that they, they just want to do something different and, you know, they enjoy sweating and working out. But if I let them go, then I failed them in, in some way. You know, I thoroughly believe that for the, for the majority of people that come to the gym, we do have the answer. And it's just, you know, I just need to get them to see that, to understand the value of what we provide. Because, you know, you can go to, you know, a big chain gym and it can be very different, but you're buying access to a facility rather than, you know, coaching and mentorship in the fitness space. Right. So yeah, it's, it's just see, see what we can get. Some people, you know, obviously budget's a problem. So it's like, okay, let's just do one by one. Let's do, let's do one a week and completely forget the six weeks and just see how we can get you going for, for this period of time. Yeah, no, I, I love that. Exactly what you just said. You said, I was trying to say it, you said it better than I just said it. And that's exactly what I wanted to say. Which is good. <laughs> awesome. So how have you, what is your process for, cause this is something I think is a challenge for a lot of people. It's like, yeah, I want, I want to do this, but it, I mean, it's still just me, right? I'm still coaching all the classes. I'm still doing all the admin. I'm still doing all the sales. Like I understand I need to follow up more. I understand I need to level up, but it's still just me. How do I find that time? So how are you hiring and, fi- and finding these new coaches as you're bringing on new help? Oh, that's the, I think uh, everybody knows that's the toughest thing. Well, um, right. And that's why I, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. That's why I'm, that's why I'm pressing you on. I want to know yeah. what, what your experience has been like. So um, my experience has been uh, the first, the first hire I made just fell into my lap. He came to do an open workout um, back in, March or, or whenever the end of the open was, we kind of chatted. He was looking to transition from a, a gym that he, that he worked at, which wasn't CrossFit based. He'd started a bit of CrossFit. He has a full-time job, so he just wanted some part-time work. So that worked really well for me at that time. He's ended up being really, really good. The kind of person who I would be happy to be like a general manager eventually when we get to that level, if he ever decides to make it a full-time career. The next person I hired lasted only about a week. And I realized just wasn't a good fit. So, you know, mutually we decided it wasn't going to work because, you know, everything on paper was, was really good. But, you know, the level of care and understanding of where my gym is at rather than, you know, where they're at is, uh, was, was important to me. You know, my average age is definitely in the mid forties. So, you know, because you can, you know, walk on your hands or do a muscle up or you've won the CrossFit games, doesn't really matter to a lot of them. Right. So it's kind of, you know, and then I've just got another, another person who I'm onboarding who's kind of come from within the community, but not directly within my community. So I've known him for a little bit, but he's been a member of another CrossFit gym. Uh, he's recently transferred over here and, you know, is looking to sort of, he's in his later, later stage of life and looking to sort of transition into coaching. And for me, that's, uh, it's been a really good fit right now. And again, it's just somebody who's, who has, a passion for this and, and, a, and a real care about other people as, as well as, you know, what they can do in the gym. So I think for court, for coaching staff's been the hardest, that's been the hardest thing. Cause, cause I wouldn't hire the biggest thing is I wouldn't hire myself 12 months ago. 
because mm. I was too focused down the athlete. Mm, yeah. Uh, and I think some people like that in their gym. Uh, and I know, you know, the owner of my previous gym liked that, but even though I was, I, was, I, I feel like I've always been a good coach and I've really enjoyed coaching and put everything into it. And the minute that hour finished, I wasn't, you know, it was about my recovery, my sleep, my food, my, you know what I mean? It wasn't so much about the bigger picture. And I'm, I'm happy to admit that. And that's all I got paid for. So it wasn't like I was not doing the job that I was supposedly doing, but I wouldn't hire that person. Yeah, no, I think that's a great, great point. I know I, I've, I've dealt with staff members like that for sure, who you're right. It's like as soon as the hour is done, I'm running the microwave because I got to get my carbs in because I have my second training session coming in and all. Yeah. I, and yeah, and that's tough because yeah, this is someone who obviously knows the methodology and in, in the training and knows how to coach movement. But yeah, the focus is not necessarily in line with what the business's focus needs to be, which I get it's tough. And so when you're saying you're onboarding this person, how are you, planting the seeds and laying the foundation and saying, Hey, yeah, this is what I'm about. This is my mission. And yeah, if this all works out, this is my grand vision. This is my grand plan. And this is where you could see, like, how are you communicating that as you're bringing this person on? Well, the best thing about this person is they've, they've read every single blog that we've ever put out. I knew that because um, I could see who'd been clicking on it and, you know, viewing it. And also my, you know, the, the love letters that I kind of write only once or twice a week. I'm not I'm not doing them every day, but I write them once or twice a week. And I could see who was reading them, who was clicking on the link, that kind of thing. And, you know, so he's, he's very understands where we're at. He's also at the same stage of where our gym is at in, 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 in his life as well. He's a similar demographic to, to, the, to, the, to my members. I've had him, you know, we've transitioned him into as a member for starters. So he's got to know everybody from that way. And then it's just about, you know, our weekly meetings, kind of sharing our vision, sharing the way that, we see coaching and looking for where they see coaching, see how we match on it and just making sure that everybody's, you know, fully understanding sort of the way that we operate. Basically, not everybody would like it. Some people love it and they're the people that we want to, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of willing to, to, to wait for them people and put a little bit of extra work in to make sure we get them, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's a good little nugget there, but you gotta be patient with it. I, I've been in situations where I'm, desperate to alleviate some of the time constraints and fi and find some available yeah, extra hours so I can work on the things I need to work on and I've, you know made some hires that you know yeah you gotta you gotta take your time with it because otherwise it's just gonna cause more time and headache potentially in the long run uh, down the line so I think that's it's great that and it's also great that you have content right you are putting out your message and your and what you're about so that it's already kind of there for people to research themselves and look into it. And it, I think that's awesome. Yeah. So you've seen a, a great amount, an awesome amount of growth in the past, you know, just few months here and your business is new, but already, you know, you're, you're, you're growing, you're already starting to hire some new people, which I think is amazing. It's starting to level up through the, the, the stages of entrepreneurship. What do you think has been key to your success and your growth so far there's been a couple of things firstly you know two brain has, has definitely guided me to the way that i wanted to run things and the way that i wanted to structure the business but it's not a magic pill you know you don't just sign up for it and it's, yeah, it's a lot of work and we've worked very hard behind the scenes to to make sure that we're following you know all the advice and and, and using the the material that's available the facebook marketing as i i wrote it off um prior to two brain i'd done a little bit of I think I spent about $800 and I didn't see or hear one person. A lot of it, I was just boosting kind of uh, blog posts and stuff to try and get our message out there a little bit more. So maybe that's had some residual effects afterwards. It's been really good for us. It's given us a way to collect names, numbers, emails, and, and follow up with people. So the whole process as a whole, you know, the incubator, the two brain marketing, and then just working really hard to make sure we do everything that's, laid out there is, is probably a combination of all three. That's amazing, man. It makes me happy to hear that. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. And if people want to talk to you and learn more about what you've got going on over there, and maybe if you have advice on how to get to regionals, where can they find you? So yeah, my email is Darren at CrossFitDefy.com. Uh, our website, CrossFitDefy.com. That's got all our content on there. And yeah, that's about it. It's just 
head down, eyes forward, and keep keep plodding on for now, and uh, try and try and sort of level up and and get to where I want to be in the business eventually. Thanks so much for hopping on, Darren. Thanks.